nothing more Indian than probably the Indian civil services, right? <laughs> so Shubhra, <laughs> you're writing a book like the D word while being in service. Um, one was, I think, extraordinarily brave and courageous. And I know some of us have been saying, I hope the day comes when it's not called brave and courageous to tell your story. But uh, I think it surprised a lot of people that you could do this as a government servant. And I know a lot of people have come up to you after that to share their own stories. Can you tell us a little bit about your, your story? Yeah. Um, it, you know, writing the D word and being a civil servant, well, it, it all goes together. Because the D did happen. <laughs> the D did happen to me. I mean, not on that <laughs> note. But yeah, the D did happen to me. And um, actually, writing the book was suggested to me as a form of therapy. Like, we were, we were looking, because medicines were not working for me, antidepressants were not working. So while we were trying to, like my whole family, we were just trying to figure out how to get me, you know, we just have a normal day. Just, just one day when I don't feel that low. So, and even my therapist suggested that, yes, like, you write, so why don't you start writing something? And, um, you know, it's, it's so, um, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't say strange, because I think it happens to everybody. This, that's how our society is structured. That a person who has depression, not only are they fighting to get better, it's a double whammy. You're all the time trying to fight the stigma, because there's so much of stigma. Like, you know, most people, what I say, they believe in the choice theory of depression, that, you know, you're a weak person. You know, depression is always seen as weakness of character, that you're not strong enough to, you know, uh, take on life, and something happens, and you become depressed, and you're not making an effort to get better. So that's where I was. And even at work, like, um, I had a few colleagues, seniors, who were very, very supportive. But I've also heard all those comments that maybe she doesn't want to work. And this is a nice way to say that, you know, you're depressed, you have depression. So I was going through all of this, and my recovery actually was really hampered with all the stigma that was happening around me. So when I started writing, and as therapy, so what should I write about was the first question that everybody asked me, and then my publishers also asked me, what do you want to write? And that is the time I decided that this stigma stops with me. If I feel that there is nothing wrong with having an illness, I mean, a lot of times I get fever, sometimes something else happens to me. And uh, you know, I, I even had a heart condition, which I was operated on for later. So that was there. All this was there. So just like that, depression is an illness. It's a disorder. Something's gone wrong with my brain. And that's just it. There's no stigma attached to it. So that's when the D word happened. I started writing it. And actually, the phase when I wrote probably 80% of the book was the deepest and darkest phase of my depression. It was a really, really, you know, I'm, I'm lucky to have survived that phase. Because after three and a half years of taking medication, I had just gone off my medication because nothing was working. And I had physical problems as well, apart from the emotional pain. And these problems were in addition to what depression brings. Because uh, contrary to the popular choice theory and the weakness theory, it's, you know, it feels as physical as any other uh, illness. You know, that uh, deep malaise and you, know, you don't have energy to do anything. Your brain is like, you know, it's as if it's, it's, it's uh, a little foggy. You're not able to think clearly. You're, sometimes time seems suspended. It's not moving. Sometimes everything is just moving around too fast. So all that is there when you have depression, all this is going uh, around in your brain. And at that time, when I had given up my medication, I was going through severe withdrawal. So probably, I don't know how I managed those nights when I couldn't sleep. I think the writing also helped. And yeah, I, the book came out, I wrote it, and it's there. It's there for anyone to read. Yeah. And, um, Not by I, our publishers, but Shubhrata also wrote in this book, <laughs> which is brought to you by Simon Schuster. Um, in this book, you've actually gone into more detail about, uh, it's based on an article you wrote for us, um, about CBT and yes. demystifying therapy. Yes. The antidepressants were not working for me. I had been on many uh, higher levels of the medication. And then finally, I had to go off the medication. So even while I was taking the medication, I was also doing therapy. And most of it, like, um, I tried psychoanalysis. Somebody did that with me. It didn't really work. But I found a very good therapist who started doing CBT with me. And the CBT somehow really helped me. And uh, you know, it was like one of the things that happens when you have depression is, uh, I don't use the word overthinking, because the moment we use overthinking, it's like a judgment, you know, that, OK, 
maybe this is the level of thinking and you're thinking so much so I won't but maybe what uh, we could do is use it, uh, the technical term rumination because that is what it is like uh, there's another thing that you know uh, most people believe that people who have depression they get depression because they think negative thoughts in fact it's the other way around the negative rumination that you have is an outcome of depression. It's something that happens when you have depression. So that is how it was. Like I also had a lot of negative thoughts and you know uh, about what have I done in life and how does you know where does life go from here and all those kind of things. And it's also that you can never be sure where it's going to get triggered. Like I may be speaking here to the audience and then suddenly I don't know from somewhere one thought would come. And like a mass gathering momentum, what happens is that one thought. Uh, gets joined in by a lot of other thoughts from different places and all these thoughts push the original thought into a much bigger form and if you can imagine a spiral which goes down it's like that you go on thinking and thinking and thinking and thinking and then your mood really really goes down so one way of dealing with that was CBT where I was encouraged by my therapist to challenge my own thoughts you know like if I have this thought that nothing good happens to me. Okay, this is something that a lot of people who have depression uh, go through, they have this thought, nothing good ever happens to me. So I was encouraged to analyze uh, where this thought is really coming from, what place in my life is it coming from, what was the, th the trigger for this thought. Then to analyze what I feel, like when this thought comes into my mind, how much of it is fear, how much of it is sadness, how much of it is anxiety, anger. So, Analyze the thought, the feeling that comes with the thought. And then maybe try to challenge it by seeing how real is it. Do I have evidence in my life to support this thought which has come? And uh, then after analyzing it, rationalizing it, what advice would I give to another friend who would probably have said the same thing to me? So this really helped. And there, there, there are times when the thoughts are rational, like, um, if this happened to another friend of mine who said that I'm scared of tsunamis. So then tsunamis are possible, right? But they're not probable. I mean, there's a very little probability of that happening. So that is how you have to tell yourself that, okay, if you have anxiety, not just depression, but even with anxiety. So you have to analyze how rational your thought is. And if it is possible, but maybe not probable, then you need to move beyond it. So that, Thank that has been there. I think um, so it's a small note in the book. So we have these stories, we have very popular myths and facts that we wanted to bust about depression, uh, including some of what uh, Shubhata spoke about.